Okay, sorry about that. So now we've got the models mounted and they are at the right vertical dimension, as far as we can tell. When we come to take, uh, to check the, uh, the wax up stage, we may find it's not correct, as you'll see in a minute. So you then Vaseline the upper and put some wax on there and mount the upper front teeth. The articulate has been opened about two to three millimeters to allow for the shrinkage of the wax. And so you mount the upper dentures. Now, if you are concerned that maybe the vertical dimension or uh, the hinge record has not been accurate, then I would only wax, have the, the front teeth waxed up and the back of the left and right would have uh, wax bite blocks on there with a V shape uh, on them so that uh, you can now try these in and check to see if the vertical dimension is correct and the hinge record is correct. So this is what the technician gives you if you're not sure that the vertical dimension is correct. You then try this in, and if necessary, use some denture fixative, fixative. You check the incisal edge levels. And on this patient, I found that it was not low enough. So, he was still overclosed. He was a, a very difficult patient to get a um, relaxed vertical dimension on. So I decided that the dentures, the vertical dimension needed opening because there was too much freeway space. I checked the center line Now, this is what we used at one point to give the right uh, plane of occlusion. And this was fitted uh, on the lower model like this. And then the teeth were then waxed up to this. I'm not entirely sure this is necessary, but this is the classical way of doing it. We then waxed up the upper denture and having uh, opened the articulate a little bit to correct the vertical dimension, we lowered the, the, lowered the upper posterior teeth. And the technician who was doing this um, attempted to get some sort of balance in the occlusion. Which later on in my technique, I did all this using the Cobalt Balancer, which I'll show you in a minute. So then this was ready for the next try -in. And this time you can just about see the teeth, but it was still not low enough. And his vertical dimension, when we measured, when we measured this, the freeway space was still too big, too much. I don't know what it was about this patient, but it, it wasn't easy. 
So we still had to open the articulator a little bit. So we opened the articulator, lowered the upper posterior teeth, and then lowered the front teeth. Do any of you do this sort of thing yourselves with a Lacron carver and heat up the wax and move the teeth around? Yeah, I find it quite fun to do. So then we're ready for the next try-in. Measuring the vertical dimension, checking the hinge record, Checking the incisal edge levels, which are better now. So then we uh, finish the dentures. Now here is where you need to make sure that the technician doesn't thin this. Because <clears throat> you've gone to a lot of trouble to get this fold here, which is going to produce the retention. Now, Eldo, do you get your technician to protect this area here? Do you draw a line on the model? I don't draw a line on the model, but he, by experience, he knows. He knows what to do. Yes, my boy in the clinic, he, he does that. Yeah, you're fortunate, you see, because a lot of people use it as a, a, uh, a laboratory which does things for other people. Yes. And the other people don't know about this. So they yeah, just right. they just trim this off and you end up with half the thickness. Yeah, I know. But uh, after listening to this, I'm sure uh, I'm going to mark it. Anyway. After? After this class, it has enlightened me on this. Yes. Even, even the secondary impression, they generally know how to code, but you know, if I draw it, it becomes uh, added information for them. Yes. Um, we'll do that. You see, I, I believe we should be in charge of technicians, not technicians in charge of us. Yes. You know, and uh, this is a thing which um, you see what you know. You see what you know. Um, and if you Excuse me just one second. Hello, Vivian. Okay, probably in about uh, an hour. As soon as I can. Okay, cheers. Bye. Um, yeah, when you've seen those lovely impressions that I showed you, when you look at your dentures next, just look and see if you've got that lovely fold, okay? And by drawing on the uh, impression um, and you, you might even think of once they've deflasked the denture, Eldo, you might do some of the trimming and draw a line round to show where you, you don't want him to trim it back. Okay. Okay. Then, and we've talked about this before, you only need this uh, burr and this one here and the polishing paste. You don't need one of these kits that they sell you with umpteen different shapes of burr, which is a complete waste of money and time and only confuses the issue. When I was teaching uh, um, appliance therapy in Delhi, um, they could produce uh, a felt brush 
I want you to listen to this in a minute, Tejas, okay? Uh, they produced a felt brush and pumice. Um, and that's how they dealt with their dentures. So, Tejas, when we do the appliance course in Hyderabad, okay. we need black wheels and pumice. Um, we need a lathe. Okay. And we need polishing soap or whatever you call it. Uh, what do you call it? A bar or? Cake. 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 Okay. Yeah. You need one of these and the felt wheel is for the soap. Okay. Yes. Okay. Now, if you don't have a polishing lathe, you can use one of these in a straight hand piece. Okay. Um, and you can use one of these. Okay. Now, now, this is in your clinic where you've made some adjustments and you just want to make, you know, I mean, the idea of making some adjustments to the denture and then sending it back to the lab to be polished. That's a complete waste of time. But make sure you protect the periphery. <clears throat> this is where, I mean, retention with dentures is so minimal anyway, that you want the best possible chance of having retention. Uh, so you don't want this trim back. Okay. Are you with us, Abby? Eldo, do you ever get anything in the post from the UK? Not recently. Um, has Anu's sister been able to send anything in the post to you? She, I don't, I don't remember as, I, I should ask her, but not recently. After Corona, nothing has come from UK, for sure. Because um, uh, I'd like to send you one of these Cobalt Bouncers. Okay. And can you find somebody to make some? Yes, I'll try to. Definitely. Okay. Yeah. Um, basically, this is fitted to the denture. Um, and I always fitted this myself. And uh, what this does is when the patient grinds round, the dentures are held in place on the ridges. So if there's any uh, interferences, you can check them and reduce them. Okay. Trying to balance dentures um, in the mouth without doing this, the dentures move all over the place. Also, you're getting your dentures made, I assume, on a hinge articulator. Yes. You don't have them made on a, on a semi-adjustable. 
Yes, on a hinge of the crew. Okay, well, even if you had them on a semi-adjustable articulator, the condyle is not the same as the patient. So the, the, the dentures are not moving on the articulator the same as they do in the mouth. So this is the only effective way of balancing of dentures. Okay. You see, um, Tejas, um, if you're six days a week fully booked, then get somebody in to do your dentures. But if you're not, you do your own endodontics, you do your own dentures. Okay. And you make more money. Okay. Um, so, um, this is the upper device, and it's connected with green stick to the upper denture, like this. And this is the upper device, and it has a pin here, which when you turn it, comes down or up. Okay. So, uh, I'll show you how this works in a moment. When you fit them, you fit them so the pin is touching the lower plate. Now, these are the two uh, lower plates which are fitted into the denture. Um, I don't think I've ever used the one on the bottom there. They're, they're the same thing, but different sizes. So originally it's fitted with a teeth in occlusion like this. And then you put this little disc on there. <clears throat> How are you gonna get these made, Eldo? This is the easy part. And they can be made in metal, okay? But they yeah. fit over these two little nipples here to hold them in place. So now you notice the back teeth are all slightly separated. So the lower plate is fitted onto this locating index, which is then put on the premolar region of the denture. That's the lower plate. And you then add green stick onto it, like this. Then you add a little bit on the top, but you have to make sure you trim this back so it doesn't get in the way of the teeth. Now you then put this little locator, the upper locator on top and it fits onto that lower plate like that. So this fits onto the lower plate and the upper device fits onto that. You then put the dentures together and put on green stick here like this. When you do this, you have to make sure that the locator, the upper locator is still fitting onto the lower because this is all warm and it can contract and separate. So you have to keep pushing it down. This, this is in, in occlusion at the moment. You then take this plate and you put it onto the denture and then it's separated. You with us, Eldo?
So now you're ready to uh, balance the occlusion. Uh, you obviously have to explain to the patient and you say to them, if you're really nice, I'll take this off before you take the dentures home. Apart from that, I need it for another patient sometime. You just don't put it into the, into the patient's mouth without telling them what you're doing. You then divide this down the center, it's easier to use. And your assistant puts it in and the patient moves left to right. And you notice that there are markings on these teeth. Now, here is where you have to know the importance to the patient of the appearance or the importance to the patient on being comfortable. Because by adjusting these red parts here, it might affect the appearance. So if the patient's really fussy about appearance, they can't have balanced occlusion very well. So you adjust these and preferably you adjust the lower if the appearance of the lower is not as important as the upper. So you adjust those with a trimming burr and then you mark the patient again and do some more adjusting and you repeat it until there are no marks at all. In which case you then have to turn the pin in the upper half a turn so it goes upwards and the teeth come into occlusion again. Uh, and you then make more adjustments and you then continue on and there comes a time where there's no markings. So you then raise the pin by half a turn. And you do this as the dentures become more and more balanced and the pin is not touching the lower plate. So you end up with a situation like this. And these dentures, when you get the patient to grind around, they don't move at all, or very little. Uh, if you just delivered the dentures without doing this, the dentures would rock all over the place when the patient grinds around, when they're asleep, producing denture sores. Okay, so um, now you're less likely for them to get denture sores. But the beautiful occlusal carving has been flattened. So you then, and the patients probably would never know at all that they're flattened. They wouldn't know. Um, I tried when I started uh, producing this particular presentation to look at the different angles of occlusal carving in dentures. It's all really complicated. And technicians who make dentures and charge a vast amount of money for them, reckon they can produce balanced occlusion uh, by using the right angle of uh, posterior occlusions, which I came to the conclusion was a load of rubbish. So at this stage, I would then take a tungsten carbide burr and put some occlusal carving in. 
uh, if you did an experiment of, uh, you know, how they do these, these uh, tests on, they use peanuts, okay? And they get the person to grind around on peanuts. And after a set amount of time, they then put the peanuts into a sieve to see if they'll go through or not. Um, possibly, uh, there might be a fraction of a difference uh, with flattened teeth like this uh, compared with super occlusal carving. I don't know. Um, so I just put some fishes in there and some, you know, it's not pretty, but it's, it's a little bit more likely to help them chew. Uh, you then have to take these things off, which is a challenge to some extent. The lower one is fine. You just take an instrument uh, like a spatula or something like that, and you tap underneath it and it breaks off. Then you use a, um, uh, a wax knife to trim off the rest of the green stick. In the upper, it's a little bit more difficult. You have to sort of lever it off and then get rid of the green stick. Then you polish the dentures and try the dentures for the final check. And you'll see these dentures are balanced. Eldo, what treatment has this patient had besides having complete dentures? What treatment did he have? Uh, his vertical dimension got corrected. Can you see the implant? <laughs> yes, 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 I can see the implant. Okay. Would you not feel more confident if your denture cases were bounced like this? Yes. Okay. It would make you feel those implants a little bit less stressed than they need be. But I think that's slightly neurotic because um, I think implants are really pretty strong things. I heard when you give implants, Rather than giving balance occlusion, it is good to give, if the upper danger is really stable, to give a mutually protective occlusion. So, say that again. If the upper danger is really stable and your lower denture has got implants, then it is better to give a mutually protected occlusion than giving a balanced denture. Absolutely not. There's no such thing as a very stable upper denture for a start. And secondly, when the patient grinds round on balanced occlusion, um, the dentures move less. Okay, there is no, there's no advantage in the other type of occlusion apart from appearance. Okay. okay. Um, now, all upper dentures move. Um, and if the dentures are balanced, they move less. Okay.
Uh, Sally, can you talk to us for a minute? Are you there, Sally? Yes. Um, yes, yes. Sally's been sending me periodically uh, some diagrams of clinics that she's thinking of moving into. And um, uh, I um, do a little bit of a design for her. Um, and there's an interesting thing about people who don't know how to design a clinic. And that is they look at a, a room and they can't conceive of how big the dental chair is and where it's going to go. Whereas I take a diagram of a dental chair and a, um, uh, the units going around them and I put it onto that diagram and then you can see in reality uh, how big that dental chair is or how much space there is. Um, unless you do that, you've got no idea. I mean, you just can't imagine a dental chair in the middle of a, you know, uh, on a diagram or in a room. Um, ideally speaking, uh, you send me uh, the, the measurements of a clinic. I get my friend who's a graphic designer to draw them up on a very big sheet, one to 25. And I then put down on them some celluloid sheets, which have the diagram of the treatment room. And then you can move them round over there, over there. Oh, there's a window there and come up with a design. Um, starting off with what's ideal, with Eldo's place, we could come up with the ideal um, because he'd got plenty of space. But then for smaller places, I designed one in, uh, in, De in Delhi for Azim and the stupid planning people wouldn't allow it the same shape because mm. they told him he had to have a consultation area. Now, uh, you need a dental area, you need a sterilizing area, you need a lab area, you need a stores area, you need a reception area and a waiting area. If you've got enough room, you can then have a dental health room. And if you've got enough room, a consultation area. But for most of my practicing life, I did my consultations with a patient sitting in the chair. You know, I'm a dentist. They're used to being in the dentist. They don't, don't, they're not used to being moved into a separate room where they know they're going to be conned into spending more money than they want to. You do all your presentations in the chair, don't you, Eldo? Yes. Yeah. All yeah. my consultation and everything is done in the chair. Yeah. Eldo. Do the accompanying people want to talk to you uh, or ask questions? It can be well, very well done in the chair itself. If they want to talk to you privately, then uh, uh, send off. I think this is something in the mind of the dentist. Eldo, who do you have working for you now? What is that? Who do you have working for you now? I have all my assistants. What do you mean? I didn't understand. 
Dentist. Dentist. I have uh, Shreya and uh, the old Cheryl has come back again. Shreya and Cheryl. Cheryl. Yeah, Cheryl had left us for a few months. So when Akshaya went, she came back. Why are they not joining us? I don't know. We'll speak to them. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. A friend of mine would like to join. Fine. I send the email address to you. Send it to me, okay. Right. Yes. Um, I believe I sent you all the presentations, didn't I, um, Tejas, the, all the denture presentations. Can you unmute, Tejas? You're muted, you're muted, Tejas. Can you press your space bar? Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Yes. In the last uh, week or two. Oh, um, I've got the uh, videos session, right? I don't have the presentations. Okay. Uh, I've uploaded them into my website. Okay. Uh, I would download the presentations and put them in where you keep my presentations, okay? Okay. Um, they're more up to date. So who's gonna be the first to do the dentures like I've shown you? Resorb bridges and oral submucous fibrosis denture patients. How differently do you treat them? Say it again. I had a patient few years back who had a resorbed, severe resorbed mandibular ridge and oral submucous fibrosis, fibrotic band, precancerous lesion. He wanted a denture. Did you do surgery? No. Uh, Not the band? Do uh, I don't know uh, what what is it, what do you think, Eldo? Do you not think to to use surgery to get rid of the fibrosis? No, I haven't done that. They inject some steroiding. Steroid injections have given some success. They inject corticosteroids into the bands. Yes, which help uh, increase the uh, flexibility and. They can open the mouth better again, but those need to be repeated. How often? Six months, I think. And Sally, presently some tablets for extra fibro are available. No, uh, but this patient did not complain of the mouth opening. He just wanted a denture fabricated, and I wasn't sure if I would be able to deliver a good retention. Yeah, retention could be a problem. The problem is, uh, another problem is because of the limited mouth opening, you may not be able to insert a tray inside. In, in that case, you should make it partial, partial impressions, you know, half left side first, right side first, and then join them together. Oh. If, if you've got a uh, very limited mouth opening, then make a you know, partial uh, impressions of left and right side separately. Okay. How are you, and Anth? I haven't heard from you at all today. I'm fine. Do you, do you make complete dentures? Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. uh, not okay. Is Is there a laboratory in your clinic? No, sir. No. Oh. That makes it a little bit more difficult. Um, 
But uh, if you want to do the dentures like I've shown you, you can get the um, the, the plaster and the uh, stone, and uh, you can do it if you wish to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we finished with dentures, and uh, I'm thinking up what we're going to do. Um, next time. Um, hopefully, on the 25th of this month, I'm going to go to the Bahamas, um, the Caribbean. Um, I'm not sure what time changes there are. Um, so, uh, I'll have to see whether it's still possible. And I'm away for a month. So when I get there, I'll check out what time it is in India and see see what we can do. So you're going alone and having a good time? Say it again. You're going alone or meeting or somebody's there? I'm most probably going alone. Um, I would like to have gone with Sonal. Okay. But if there's any problem with the virus yeah. and he comes back, um, he has to be able to run his shop and his wife's got um, uh, diabetes. No, um, um, uh, a chest problem. Okay. And uh, he's not sure about going. All right. All right. So I'm going to be spending... Uh, Two weeks looking at the the Caribbean beaches. Um, the only good news is the rum. Um, I'll let you know, Tejas, how it is. Okay. Um, I may be getting an education in in different types of rum dishes, uh, drinks. <laughs> Yes, you know that Eldo is a secret drinker, don't you? Uh, I, I thought it was not a secret. <laughs> you know, Mitchin took me to a, um, <coughs> a parlor in... in... We, we lost you. Say that again, Eldo. I think Eldo's uh, frozen. Okay, we'll uh, meet again next week, hopefully, uh, eight o'clock, okay? Yes, and uh, yes, Siley, let me know this other person, okay? Yes. Is she as nice as Pratim? Yes, a very good friend. She's good. Is she Absolutely. in India? Yes. yes. Uh, so she is not currently practicing dentistry. And uh, she, so I didn't think of her before, but uh, she says she misses and she would love to be the part of a session, of our session. Okay. Send, send me the information. Non yes, I will. Okay, Dad. So okay. I'll see, see you all next week. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye then. Bye, Abby. Bye, Anand. Stay just. Bye.